Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to write double replacement reactions and how to predict the products. So before we get started, what is a double replacement reaction? It's a reaction in which the ions in two compounds change partners. Um, or when you have two different compounds, so not an element in a compound, like this is one thing, this is something else, and they're going to swap. Um, the cation, which is the positively charged um, ion, combines with the anion, the negatively charged one, in the other compound. Or an easier way to remember this is I remember outside goes with outside. So they go together, and then inside goes with inside. And they go together, which gives us these products. Um, and so that's a double replacement reaction. You have two compounds and they're going to swap partners. Now, these reactions can only occur if your reactants are aqueous, which means that they are dissolved in water. And here, I just wanted to show you a picture of what do we mean when something is aqueous. So sodium hydroxide, NaOH, is aqueous. It dissolves in water. And I have a little beaker of water here. And if you notice, the ions, the cation and the anions are separated. And so your reactants must be aqueous for these reactions to occur. The ions have to be apart. And that is so that they're moving, they have enough energy to react. Because if you add two solids, in solids we know atoms don't really move. So they're not going to react. Another not very well drawn picture I wanted to show you is one of a double replacement reaction. So here we have our reactants. Um, Sodium chloride is aqueous, so there's one beaker, my sodium chloride, and you can see my ions are separated. Now I did not write their charges, that should be drawn, but this is not like a pig, it's okay. And then I've got my other reactant, silver nitrate, and the silver and the nitrate ions are separated. And so if you were given this, this is what your reactants would look like separately. They're both aqueous, so they're all dissolved in water. And then it's a double replacement, so outside goes with outside. They would form together, and they would form together, the AG and the CL. And this is what it would actually look like. So these are the products, NaNO3, which is sodium nitrate, nitrate, and that is aqueous, which is why my sodium and my nitrate ions are floating in solution. And then it also forms AgCl, silver chloride. Silver chloride is a precipitate, or a solid, that forms when you combine two liquids. And if you notice, I drew them down here. They would be clumped together. When you mix them, it would look cloudy. That is a white precipitate. So you'd see um, like a cloudy white in your solution. And that means that those two atoms, or ions, form a solid. Now, when we write these reactions, how do we know that these are going to form a solid? Um, it's not like a list you have to memorize. Instead, we're going to use our solubility rules to determine is the product going to be aqueous, so be dissolved in water, or do they form a precipitate or a solid um, in the solution. So if you go to the back of your periodic table, you should see this star chart. And it will tell you this. So the top section says soluble compounds contain. Soluble means that it is aqueous. It can dissolve in water. So all of these compounds are aqueous. Ammonium, nitrate, cyanide, all the chlorates, bromine, chlorine, iodine, sulfate. All of these things are aqueous. Um, now, over here it says common exceptions. An exception breaks the rule. So there are only a few exceptions for bromine, chlorine, iodine, sulfate. And what this means is if you have bromine bonded with any one of these, it is not going to be aqueous. It would form a precipitate or be solid. Same with chlorine, iodine, sulfate. So let's say you had NaI. You would look at that and say, OK, iodine is right here. It is usually aqueous. Do, 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 go check. Sodium is not one of those exceptions, so it, that is aqueous. But if you had strontium iodide, 
you would do the same thing. Iodine's up here, so it's probably aqueous, but strontium is an exception right there, so that means that would form a precipitate or be a solid. Now, the bottom of the chart is just the opposite. These are insoluble compounds, which means they are normally solid or precipitates, unless if they are paired with one of their exceptions, and then they are aqueous. And so let's look at these ex exceptions. They're always ammonium and then all alkali metals. If you forgot what alkali metals are, that is the group one, so hydrogen are the one positive ions, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, etc. Um, and then a few others. So to practice reading these, carbonate. Carbonate is normally a solid. If you had calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate is CaCO3. So you would look at that and say, okay, here's carbonate, and then come over to this list. Carbonate is not that, and carbonate is not an alkali metal, so it is not an exception, which means it's solid. Okay. I'm going to ask you to pause the video right now and use your solubility rules to label if these are aqueous or solid, and then when you're done, hit play. So here are the answers to if these are aqueous or solid, so you can check. Um, it can be confusing with the exceptions. As you can see, I had to scratch some out. Um, so bromine is normally aqueous unless it's with silver, which that example was. That's why it was a solid. Sulfur is normally solid. Silver is not an exception, so it stayed solid. Um, and then don't forget, phosphate is normally solid, but sodium right here is an alkali metal. That's why it was aqueous. So that's reading the solubility rules. Every time you write a double replacement reaction, you have to include the states of matter, which means you must use your solubility rules. So now we're gonna practice actually writing some double replacement reactions. We're gonna start with this one. So calcium nitrate plus lithium carbonate. When you saw this, you most likely would not be told that this is a double replacement, but looking at it, it's two compounds so you should know two compounds combining is double replacement. So how we mix them. Outside goes with outside. So that would be known as calcium carbonate. I write calcium first because metals always are written first. And then the insides go together. Do, 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 do. Now I'm not going to write nitrate lithium because you always write the metal first. So lithium nitrate. Now below that, I'm going to write and balance this equation. Calcium has a charge of plus two. Nitrate is a polyatomic ion, and it is NO3 negative one. So that formula is gonna be CaNO3 two. I put a two here because you need two nitrates for every calcium. Plus lithium carbonate. Lithium is plus one carbonate CO3 negative 2 so we're going to need two lithiums for every one carbonate I like 2 CO3 will form now calcium carbonate calcium is a plus 2 carbonate is a minus 2 CaCO3 and then lithium nitrate they're both ones LiNO3 now to balance this equation we have on the left hand side looking there are two nitrates this two only goes to the parentheses so two nitrates and there are two lithiums so we can put a two right here and now because it's double replacement we need to use our solubility rules to determine the states of matter I'll give you a big hint you can go look at the solubility rules but the reactants in a double replacement reaction are always aqueous and we just write that as another subscript or right below it. Now we need to check our products. So the first one, calcium carbonate. Products are not always aqueous. Reactants are always aqueous. So carbonate is a solid, unless if it's with NH4 or an alkali metal. Calcium is not an alkali metal. It is an alkaline metal. It has a charge of two. So it's not an exception, which means it's solid. 
lithium nitrate. Nitrate is right here. It is normally aqueous and it has no exceptions. That means it is always aqueous. That gets an AQ. And then you would be done. We're going to do one more example. Magnesium chlorate plus lithium hydroxide. So first, write your products and words. Magnesium goes with hydroxide. And then insides go together. So to write this, magnesium hydroxide plus lithium chlorate. And then write your entire balanced equation. Uh, magnesium is a plus 2, chlorate is ClO3, negative 1. So that becomes Mg parentheses ClO3 parentheses 2 plus lithium hydroxide. Lithium is plus 1, hydroxide OH minus 1. So LiOH, they swap. Magnesium hydroxide. Be really careful when you write this. Magnesium is plus 2. Hydroxide is minus 1. MgOH2 plus lithium and chlorate. They're both 1s. So LiClO3. And then we need to balance this equation. There are two hydroxides here and two chlorates here. So I'm going to go ahead, because there are two hydroxides on the right-hand side, put a 2 right there in front of the LiOH. Now hydroxides are balanced out. There are two here, two here. And now we have on the left-hand side two lithiums and two chlorates, so we can put a 2 here. Now, states of matter. Our reactants, again, are always aqueous. If you don't believe me, you can check the solubility rules. They are. But we need to check our products. So magnesium hydroxide. Hydroxides are down here. They are usually solid unless they are partnered with NH4, alkali metals, calcium, strontium, barium. If hydroxide is with any of those, it would be aqueous. Well, hydroxide is with magnesium. Magnesium is not an alkali metal, not that, not that, not that. So it is not an exception, which means it's a solid. And then the lithium chlorate. Chlorate is up here in aqueous, and it has no exceptions. That means every time you see chlorate, it is always aqueous. It doesn't matter what it's paired with because it has no exceptions. So that would be how you would write this double replacement reaction. I hope this video was helpful. Please just be careful when you look at your solubility rules. If it is not an exception, then it's normal. Um, that is usually what messes people up. And then I would make sure if you have the solubility rules on your periodic table that you label everything aqueous, solid, solid, aqueous. I hope you enjoyed this video and that this will help you. Good luck writing reactions.